Welcome back to our winter cruise with Scenic through some of Europe's most magical scenery and to the city of grand palaces, musical prowess and at this time of the year, Christmas markets galore. Christmas markets in Vienna have a really long history dating back to 1296 when the emperor decided they were necessary to ensure that there were enough supplies over the Christmas period. Nowadays, with shops on every corner, they're hardly a necessity, but oh my goodness, they're so much fun! The main Viennese Christmas market is held in one of the city's oldest squares, with the city's grand town halls in all its gothic glory as the backdrop. Sonia, we are right in the heart of Vienna. Yes, it's the biggest market in Vienna. I think we have about uh, 22, 23 Christmas markets here in Vienna, but this one is the biggest and the most famous one. There's almost 150 stalls to keep you busy. And when you're done shopping, there's a full entertainment program, which today features a local men's choir. After a couple of days exploring Vienna, we've made our way further down the Danube to Budapest. The Hungarian capital is one of Europe's oldest and most history-laden cities. But while Budapest's buildings are sure to impress in daylight, it's after dark that the real show begins. Scenic offer a night cruise along the Danube, taking in all of its riverside landmarks. To see this at the night time is just, um, you can't top it. It's, look at it, it's an awesome city, it's beautiful. It's, Daytime it was magic and nighttime it's just mind blowing. We've left our scenic spaceship in Budapest and crossed over into the Czech Republic for a little side trip to its capital, Prague. It's impossible not to be charmed by this beautiful city of Prague. Freed from communism in 1989, Europe inherited a gem and the tourists soon followed. It's at the geographical heart of Europe and pumping through its veins is centuries of art, history and gobsmacking architecture. Known as the city of a hundred spires, Prague is one of Europe's best preserved cities prized for its romantic riverside location, historic old town square and Baroque architecture. And at the centre of it all is the magnificent Charles Bridge, a 14th century stone bridge connecting the two sides of the city. Why is the Charles Bridge such an icon of Prague? Uh, Charles Bridge is a great masterpiece of Gothic architecture from 1357. Uh, what a surprise, it's not the oldest bridge. We had a stone bridge even before from 1165, but it wasn't that big and strong as Charles Bridge, so it was washed away after a few years. And then Charles IV, he decided to build a big and strong bridge which survived till now. It not only survived, it became one of the city's most popular sites. But it seems it's not just us visitors that are in love with Prague. Long before the tourist hordes, it captured the attention of the Nazis. Did Prague get damaged at all during World War II? Uh, thanks God, Prague wasn't that much damaged. Some buildings were a little bit damaged or destroyed, but generally Prague wasn't touched much. So it wasn't damaged because the Nazis fell in love with Prague, didn't uh, they? Definitely, definitely Germans fell in love with Prague. And also during the war, they thought they'll stay here forever. On our list of must-see attractions is Prague Castle, the residence of the country's president and home to the Lopkovich Palace, the only privately owned building in the castle complex. It also gives an insight into the fascinating 700-year history of the noble Lopkovich family. Oh, of course, the aristocrats get the best views. 
Well, I feel blessed to see this view. You must feel triply blessed to live here. Honestly, I love it more and more because uh, whenever you have a look on the whole panorama of the city, it's different. It's different, you can find always something new, something modern, something old. It's twinkling.